Hi, good day and welcome to another interesting and informative lesson on TTT as we continue to prepare you for this year's SEA. Today we are looking at English language arts in particular section one but before we go on let me remind you to always visit our website learn.moe.gov.tt where all these lessons are there for you to go through once more and you can get other curricular needs as well. We continue to help students connect and continue learning via the Ministry of Education here in Trinidad and Tobago. So we're looking at section one of the ELA paper and we want to go through this and ensure that you understand exactly what we are doing and what you have to do as well. Are you excited? Remember the section has three tasks for you to complete, spelling, punctuation and capitalization and grammar. The three tasks total 30 marks, you want to get all of those marks. So let's go through each task and ensure that you clearly understand what you have to do. Section one or task one, spelling. Remember your instructions are important. They are what guide you into doing exactly what you need to do for your questions. So in the spelling, the instructions let you know that you have to circle the word that is spelled incorrectly in each line and write the correct word in the box provided. Two simple instructions, right? Circle the word that's spelled incorrectly in the line and write the word that is the correctly spelled word in the box that is provided. So let's go straight to our passage. You read carefully and see if you can figure out what words are spelled incorrectly, all right? Read with me. My father bought me an excellent birthday gift of three brown and white puppies. I love them dearly, but they are quite a feisty bunch. Their friskiness can be irritating sometimes. They usually get mud on their furry coats and dislike bathing. They constantly get into mischief. What a handful. So let's read it one more time. My father bought me an excellent birthday gift of three brown and white puppies. I love them dearly, but they are quite a feisty bunch. Their friskiness can be irritating sometimes. They usually get mud on their furry coats and dislike bathing. They constantly get into mischief. What a handful. Have you figured out some of the words that are spelled incorrectly? Let's go through each line and examine them carefully. Let's go to line one. My father bought me an excellent birthday gift. Uh, remember, you have to sift out the ones that you know already and figure out which word in line one is spelled incorrectly. All right, we're looking at each word. Do you know the word that is spelled? and you, you would find the ones that are spelled incorrectly already. All right, my father bought me an excellent birthday gift. You know the words father, you know me, and birthday gift of. All those look correct to you. Which one is spelled? What about bought? Is that the correct form of the past tense? Yeah? Excellent is spelled wrong. Did you figure that one out? What's missing? Let's say the word, excellent. So a letter is missing, yes, excellent. And it's missing between the X and the E. Is it a S or a C? My father bought me an excellent birthday gift. Right, you know the word bought is correct already. We know uh, what's the rule. Excellent, say the word. Frequently misspelled word it is, when C is followed by the vowels E, I, or Y, the C makes a soft sound. So what was missing was a C. So it's E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T. And when you say the word too, you know that what letter is missing and you can figure out what's missing as well. So you can say it in your mind when you're doing the people. All right? Excellent. E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T. You figured it out? Excellent, right? Here are some strategies to remember, right? Syllabication, syllabicate the word, visualize the word, and look for the parts of the word that you know. 
So remember when C is followed by the vowels E, I, or Y, the C makes a soft sound. Let's look at this word, mercy. It's followed by Y, so you have M-E-R-C-Y. Soft C again, fascinate, F-A-S-C-I-N-A-T-E. Let's look at this one, ascend, A-S-C-E-N-D. So we circle the word, excellent, and we write the correct spelling, Excel, E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T, and figure out a way to remember how to spell the word as right, right? X, cell, and, and you have it there. All right, so you have to figure out ways and means of learning for your own self that would make you remember it quickly, all right, and correctly. Let's move on to line two. Three brown and white puppies. I love them dearly, all right? Three brown and white puppies. I love them dearly. What's wrong there? What's the rule? We are talking about three puppies, right? Look at the word puppies carefully. You would have figured out already that it spells incorrectly because the ending seems wrong, right? When we are forming the plural, what do we do? Say the rule in your mind or say it aloud from the comfort of your home, all right? Words ending with Y, with no vowel before the Y, we change the Y to I and add ES. So puppy becomes P-U-P-P-I-E-S. P-U-P-P-I-E-S, all right? Enemy, another example here. Let's form enemies, E-N-E-M, I-E-S, E-N-E-M-I-E-S, good. Let's find the error in line three. But I love them dearly, but they are quite a feisty bunch, their friskiness. I love them dearly, but they are quite a feisty bunch, their friskiness. Which word is spelled wrong there? Yeah, which word is incorrect? Feisty. Now this is a popular word that is spelt incorrectly, all right? So you need to remember the word. It's a popular, it's a commonly mis misspelled word. So the correct spelling is F-E-I, not F-I-E. F-E-I-S-T-Y, F-E-I-S-T-Y, E before I. Think of something that will help you remember it, all right? Feisty, or just learn it by heart. F-E-I-S-T-Y, all right? Remember, it ends in S-T-Y as a swelling on your eye, <laughs> right? On your eyelid. Uh, it ends in S-T-Y as a swelling on your eyelid. So a fun fact is about this word is that feisty, feisty was associated with a small aggressive dog and not a pig in a sty. So something for you to know, all right? And probably get a smile with. Let's find the correct, uh, the error in line four. Their friskiness can be irritating sometimes. They usually get mud. Their friskiness can be irritating sometimes. Remember when you say the word out in your mind as well, you might not be able to say it out loud in the exam room, but when you say it in your mind and you realize that how it is being said, something is wrong with the word, right? There's a letter that's ro wrongly put there. So right away you know what the incorrectly spelled word is in the sentence can be irritating sometimes. They usually get mud, yes. So we don't need an E there. What do we need? It's a frequently misspelled word. You've got to find a way of remembering it. It's not irritating with an E, but irritating with an I. Yeah, irritating with an I. So it's I-R-R-I-T-A-T-I-N-G. I-R-R-I-T-A-T-I-N-G. Visualize, syllabicate. These are ways and means you can use to remember the words, all right? Irritating, and it's a popularly misspelled word, right? Use it when you're playing Scrabble. Make long words with eerie to remember. Have fun with the word irrit with the uh, prefix eerie, and see what you can do with it to remember it, all right? Irrigating, I-R-R-I-G-A-T-I-N-G, irritability, I-R-R-I-T-A-B-I-L-I-T-Y, irritant, I-R-R-I-T-N-T. So you've got to remember it's I-R-R-I-T-A-T-I-N-G. C 
settle the word that spells incorrectly and write the correct thing in the box provided. So let's continue with the error in line five. They usually get mud on their furry coats and it's like bathing. Right away you're seeing the error. Yeah, let's examine the sentence. What's the rule? They're on their furry coats and it's like bathing. Which word is spelled incorrectly? Bathing. Yeah, it ends with a silent E, and you know the rule. When the word ends with a silent E, we drop the E before adding ING. So we have bathe, B A T H E. In order to add ING, we have to drop that silent E. So it becomes B A T H I N G. B A T H I N G. Very good. So we circle bathing. And we write the correct thing in the box provided without the E. And we go on to line six. They constantly get into mischief. What a handful. They constantly get into mischief. What's the rule in this line now? What's, what's wrong there? Which word is wrong? Yes, when we are adding full to the end of a word, yeah, the suffix full, we use it with one L. So when the suffix full is added to the end of a base word, we drop one L. So we have hand plus full becomes handful without one L, H-A-N-D-F-U-L. All right? Useful, U-S-E-F-U-L, one L. When full is added to a word at the end, one L is used. So we circle the word handful. We write the correct thing in the box provided with one L. So look through your words now. We have excellent spelled E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T. Puppies, P-U-P-P-I-E-S. Feisty, F-E-I-S-T-Y. Irritating, I-R-R-I-T-A-T-I-N-G. Bathing, B-A-T-H-I-N-G. And handful, H-A-N-F-U-L. Look at your words carefully because we want to do our spelling bee. Get your paper and pencil ready and I'll call out the words for you. I'm giving you a couple of seconds to get your paper and your pencil. So let's begin. First word, excellent, excellent. Two puppies, puppies. Three feisty, feisty. Four irritating, irritating. Five bathing, bathing. Six, handful, handful. I'll read them over again. Pay attention to what you have written. One, excellent. Two, puppies. Three, feisty. Four, irritating. Five, bathing. Six, handful. How many you think you got right? Let's see. Sure you did well. Excellent. E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T. Remember, C is followed by vowels E-I-O-Y. The C makes a soft sound, so you have to remember the rule and remember how to spell the word. You can figure out a way to remember it too, looking at the word and breaking it up, all right? Puppies, P-U-P-P-I-E-S, words which end, end with Y have no vowel before the Y, we change the Y to I before adding ES. Feisty, F-E-I-S-T-Y, a commonly misspelled word. Make associations with it. Use syllabications to remember. Remember, it's F-E-I-S-T-Y. Let's go to irritating, I-R-R-I-T-A-T-I-N-G. Remember this word, it's a popularly misspelled word. All right. Bathing, B-A-T-H-I-N-G, 
It uses the rule when ending with silent E, we drop the E before adding ing and handful. Remember when we add the suffix full to the base word, we drop one L. So check your words now. How many did you get right? All? I'm sure you did. Congratulations, all right? And um, as we go through each one, remember to you would have circled each word that was spelt incorrectly and you wrote the correct thing in the box provided. All right, remember to do that. Circle the words in each line correct, uh, that is spelt incorrectly and write the correct thing in the box provided. Congratulations to those of you who got all correct. All right, thanks for paying such good attention to our spelling exercise. And when we come back, we'll be looking at punctuation and capitalization, so stay tuned. going to do the second task of your section one for our ELA paper which deals with punctuation and capitalization. Remember the punctuation marks that are tested for SEA are your end marks which include your full stop, your exclamation mark and your question mark, your pause marks which include your comma, your comma and your colon and of course your other marks which include your apostrophe S to show possession and direct speech, your, direct, your quotation marks to show direct speech, the actual words of the speaker, or maybe to denote a special name or phrase in your sentence, all right? So you need to master these marks, know when they are used, and know when you have to use them as well. So in our instructions for punctuation, and capitalization, we have to pay attention to the fact that there's one error per line. A line is not the same as a sentence. You've got to insert the correct mark or letter, meaning you have to write it in, in the passage yourself. All right, so once you figure it out, you write it. Here are some helpful tips to guide you in ensuring that you do the right thing. Read the entire passage twice. Check for overall punctuation. And although there's one error per line, you'll need to read each sentence. You may find it helpful also to read the sentence before or after the line you're examining so that you can figure out exactly what's wrong in the sentence or the line, right? So let's read the passage. Read with me now. Did anyone do my homework? Asked the teacher. To her surprise, many of the students admitted that they hadn't completed it. Very calmly, with no fuss, Miss Khan began to guide them through the chapters of Caribbean birds. By lunchtime, every child had completed the science project. What a sweet teacher. Let's read it again. Did anyone do my homework? Asked the teacher. To her surprise, many of the students admitted that they hadn't completed it. Very calmly, with no fuss, Ms. Khan began to guide them through the chapters of Caribbean birds. By lunchtime, every child had completed the science project. What a sweet teacher. Have you figured out which punctuation marks are missing, which capital letters are missing? Let's investigate. Line number seven. Did anyone do my homework? Asked the teacher. Clearly, we're asking a question in this sentence because they're actually telling you that. Ask the teacher. The teacher is asking that question. Did anyone do my homework? Yes. So you probably figure out already that you are missing an N mark, but it's a question mark. Yeah? That one was easy. Did anyone do my homework? It goes before the close quotation mark. Remember that, your punctuation mark goes before the close quotation. 
All right. Did anyone do my homework? Asked the teacher. Congratulations to all those of you who figured it out, probably whilst you were reading as well. All right. Remember for direct speech, in this instance, did anyone do my homework? In direct speech, open and close apostrophe marks enclose the actual words of a speaker. And we know this already. So we have our open and close quotation marks. A punctuation mark is needed before the close quotation mark, right? And helpful hints to help us know which one was missing, which end mark was missing, whether it was a full stop, an exclamation mark, or a question mark. We had hints, right? Asked the teacher. So we know that that's a question. Did anyone do my homework? So you know that's a question as well, all right? So the words did and asked indicate that it's a question. So a question mark was missing. So we have, did anyone do my homework? A punctuation mark must be placed before the close quotation, as I said. So our question mark was missing. We know that because we're asking a question. Good. So there we have it. Our first punctuation mark, you write it in, in your passage. Let's examine line number eight. To her surprise, many of the students admitted. To her surprise, many of the students admitted. Now, when you are reading it too, you'll realize that there's a pause. Where is the pause? Where is the pause? After surprise. What pause mark is missing? Is it a colon? To her surprise, is that a, an independent clause? So right away you know what kind of punctuation mark is missing because you read it and you're reading with understanding. Right. It's not an independent clause. It needs just a comma. Yes. Congratulations. So we figured it out. Remember, you must read with understanding. To her surprise, many of the students admitted they had, hadn't completed it. All right. We're just continuing on to the end of the line. And you know you are posing there. We must insert a comma after an introductory phrase. So to her surprise, it's an introductory phrase. And so we have our comma after the word surprise. And we insert it in. Let's examine line number nine or number nine. They hadn't completed it very calmly with no fuss. Miss, they hadn't completed it very calmly with no fuss. What's missing there? You have the word hadn't, which is a, think about it, it's a contraction of what? Had and not. And when we are forming the contraction, what do we use? Yes. We use an apostrophe. Where does the apostrophe go? between N and T, yes. So H-A-D-N apostrophe T to show the contraction. Congratulations, you all are really doing well with this punctuation and capitalization. I know this, and I know that you would have read with understanding. Let's remember contractions. A contraction is a shortened form of a word where the apostrophe is used to combine two words into one. They hadn't completed it. Had plus not gives hadn't. So we take out the O and we put an apostrophe to replace that O. H-A-D-N apostrophe T. And there you have your contractions. They're used to shorten words and are useful in our writing. So we put in our apostrophe, we insert it where we have to in the passage, and we move on. Let's examine number 10. Miss Khan began to guide them through the chapters. Miss Khan began to guide them through the chapters. That's her name. Yeah? Miss Khan. So what do we put there? Yes. We have to put a capital K there and give her name the importance that it needs. All right? Proper nouns have that importance of beginning with a capital letter. Right. Miss Khan began to guide them through the chapters. So most of you would have gotten that. Congratulations. A bit of a simple one there with cap capitalization. Let's remember capital letters are used for 
proper nouns, the names of people, places, animals, and things need to be capitalized. Miss Khan began to guide them through the chapters. In line nine, that K has to be a capital K. Yes, let's move on to line number 11. The chapters of Caribbean birds by lunchtime, every child. Are you looking at it yourself to see you have open quotation? But you're not seeing the closed quotation. So right away, you know, closed quotation marks are missing. Right? Good. We figured that much out. But where, do, where are they missing from? How do we figure out? We must know why they are needed. Why are they needed? We are naming the chapters. Yes, she is naming the chapters. We are guiding them through the chapters. And the name of the chapters are Caribbean birds. The name of the chapters are Caribbean birds. So we have the open quotation for Caribbean birds. So now we need the closed quotation. And the closed quotation mark comes before or after the punctuation mark. After the punctuation mark. Congratulations. So we name them correctly, Caribbean birds, and we give them the importance with the open and closed quotation marks. Remember, open and closed quotation marks are used to enclose the title of books, right? And the quoted text is capitalized. Miss Khan began to guide them through the chapters of Caribbean birds and by lunchtime every child. So we know the name of the chapters is Caribbean birds. So the chapters would have indicated something to us. Keywords indicate the name is following, right? And following that will be our name enclosed in quotation marks, right? So we put our closed quotation after the punctuation mark and the full stop in this case. By lunchtime, so we're continuing now, let's examine number 12. We're at the end of this task. By lunchtime, every child had completed the science project. What a sweet teacher. What's missing there? Right away, you're looking at it and you're seeing that the end punctuation is missing at the end of the passage. There's no end mark. So is it a full stop? Is it a question mark? Or is it an exclamation mark? You need to read it and see what's being said. Right? Read what is being said. What a sweet teacher. Right? By lunchtime, every child had completed the science project. What a sweet teacher. Is it asking a question? No. <laughs> right? It's not asking a question. Remember, an exclamation mark is used after an interjection. Strong feelings, high volume, to show emphasis, to show appreciation, and at the end of a sentence, it's used here, all right? What a sweet teacher, right? So we are emphasizing that she is a sweet teacher, right? And we're using emphasis. We are showing appreciation. So we need an exclamation mark. Very well done. Right? What a sweet teacher. An exclamation mark is sometimes needed according to the speaker's tone. Right? And when you read it in your when you read it in your mind, you will know what tone the person is using. What a sweet teacher signals an appreciative tone, right? How it's being said. So we must use an exclamation mark. So did anyone do my homework? Question mark was missing. Asked the teacher to her surprise. Comma, many of the students admitted that they hadn't, apostrophe T, completed it. Very calmly with no fuss, Miss Khan, capital K, began to guide them through the chapters of Caribbean birds, close quotation there for Caribbean birds, by lunchtime, every child had completed the science project. What a sweet teacher, exclamation mark. And so we've completed tasks for punctuation and capitalization. I thank you for your patience and I thank you for your good job at working at it with me as well. All right, and when we come back, we will complete task three and get all of our 30 marks. So stay tuned. <laughs>
welcome back as we complete section one of your English language arts paper. We are on to task three, which is our grammar section. And as we go through our instructions, I need you to note that your instructions are very important. These are what guide you to let you know exactly what you have to do in each task. All right, so for your grammar uh, task, we have one grammatical error in each line and you must draw a circle around the error and write the correct thing in the box that is provided. So each line has an error. You circle the error once you locate it and write the correct thing in the box that is provided for you, right? Remember, a line is not the same as a sentence, all right? Here are some helpful tips to guide you. Read the entire passage twice. Check for the overall verb tense. Although there's one error per line, you'll need to read each sentence and you may find it helpful also to read the sentence before, after the line you are examining. So let's examine our passage. Last Thursday, the Standard 5 class traveled to Trinity Mall in a maxi taxi with we teacher. We first found the toy shop, after which we visited the arcade, had great fun there, but then had lunch. Unfortunately, one student got lost in his way to the bathroom. We all searched frantic for him. Thankfully, a security guard, which came to our assistance, found him. Let's read it again. Last Thursday, the Standard 5 class traveled to Trin City Mall in a maxi taxi with we teacher. We first found the toy shop, after which we visited the arcade. Had great fun there, but then had lunch. Unfortunately, one student got lost in his way to the bathroom. We all searched frantic for him. Thankfully, a security guard, which came to our assistance, found him. I'm sure my good readers would have gone through already and seen some of the errors, but remember, each line has an error, so we will investigate each line separately, and you should do this too when you are doing your sections, all right? So we are investigating each line separately. Let's find the finite verbs first. This will help us greatly when we are figuring out what's wrong with the passage, all right, in terms of the grammar. So as we look at the verbs in the center in the passage, the standard five class travel, our first verb, in a maxi taxi with we teacher. We first found the toy shop, found, and that's in the past tense after which we visited the arcade, visited, also past tense, had great fun there, had, had great fun there, past tense, but then had lunch, past tense again. Unfortunately, one student got lost in his way to the bathroom, got lost, past tense. We all searched, frantic for him, searched, past tense, Thankfully, a security guard, which came to our assistance, came, past tense, found him. Found, past tense. So, mostly in the past tense, and we'll need this information later, all right? So, most of our verbs are in the past tense, if not all. All right, so let's examine line 13, number 13. Last Thursday, the Standard 5 class travel to Trinity Mall. So, right away... Are you noticing what's wrong with that line? The passage, yes, is in the past tense. So our, all our verbs must be in the past tense. Travel is a present tense verb. So we must put it in the past tense. So we circle travel because that's not past tense, that's present tense. And let's go to our rule. Most regular verbs are formed by adding ed. So we have look plus ed, looked, talk plus ed, talked, right? Looked and talked, just have ed added to them, no spelling change to the root word. Some verbs require doubling the last consonant at the end of the base word. This applies to words ending in an unstressed vowel by the letter L. And then we add ed. So. Last Thursday, the Standard 5 class traveled to Trin City. The word is travel, right? The root word or base verb. 
and we are adding L. We must double the L before adding ED. So it's travel, T-R-A-V-E-L-L-E-D. All right, we circle travel and we write the correct thing in the box that is provided, T-R-A-V-E-L-L-E-D. Let's practice some. Let's look at the base verb cancel. If we are adding ED, the base word becomes C-A-N-C-E-L-L -L plus ED. The base verb dial, we want to form dialed. The base word now becomes D-I-A-L-L, -L, then E-D. Signal. The base word forming the past tense now comes S-I-G-N-A-L-L, -L, and then E-D. So we circle the word travel, and we write the correct thing in the box provided, T -R -A -V -E -L -L -E -D. L L E D. Let's examine line 14 in a maxi taxi with we teacher. We first found the toy shop. What's wrong there? Yes, our pronoun sounds wrong. Is this the possessive pronoun? That's correct. We teacher, is we a possessive pronoun? We is what kind of pronoun? Personal pronoun. Yes, so we need the possessive pronoun. It replaces the noun to show ownership. Right, so we are talking about whose teacher? We teacher? No. Our teacher. Let's go through the list of possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns, right? Must be used in the right context. Right, possessive Determiner is classified as possessive pronoun as it replaces nouns and shows ownership, right? Let's look at our pronouns. We know our personal pronouns. They're quite easy. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Possessive determiner. My, your, his, her, it's, our, their. Possessive pronoun. Mine, yours, his, hers, ours, theirs. But in this case, we have we teacher. We don't need a personal pronoun there. We need a possessive pronoun. And the possessive pronoun that goes with we is our. So it will be, right, we need to show ownership. We, our. Yes, in a maxi taxi with our teacher, right, we first found the toy shop. So we are going with the possessive determiner, our. All right, so the word we would be circled and our written in the box that is provided. We don't need a personal pronoun, we need a possessive pronoun. And this is where your rules come in and you must know your pronouns very good. Know your personal pronouns, know your possessive pronouns, know your relative pronouns. We first found the toy shop as we continue examining line 15, after which we visited the arcade, had great fun there, but then had lunch. After which we visited the arcade, had great fun there, but then had lunch. Reading the whole sentence from top to bottom kind of gives you an idea of what's wrong. Right, we first found the toy shop, after which we visited the arcade, had great fun there, so we are doing a list of things, right? We, visit, we found the toy shop, we visited the arcade, had great fun. We are continuing, we are adding on. So do we need that conjunction? But, no, we are adding on. What conjunction do we need when we are adding on? Yes, but is used to contrast information and we said this before, all right? We use and to add information, right? So the sentence adds information of the events that's taking place, therefore the conjunction but is incorrect. And you would have seen that your own self. All right? So but would be circled and and is the one that we have to replace it with. So we circle but and we write and. Let's examine number 16. Had great fun there and then had lunch. Unfortunately, one student got lost 
in his way to the bathroom. Would we use that? How would we say that something is wrong? Have you figured out what's wrong? Unfortunately, one student got lost in his way to the bathroom. We have wrong use of a preposition, yes. It's not in his way, but rather the preposition in does not show movement. On his way. On shows movement to a place, right? So we would say, unfortunately, one student got lost on his way to the bathroom. We circle in and write the correct preposition on. Let's examine number 17. On his way to the bathroom, we all searched frantic for him. Thankfully, a security guard. On his way to the bathroom, we all searched frantic for him. Something is wrong there. We are describing how we searched for him. So we need to modify yes. So the verb has to have a word that is describing how we are searching for him. So we searched frantic. How did we search for him? Adverbs tell us how actions are performed, the manner in which we are searching for him. And give us more information about the verb. So it's telling us how we search for him. We can't, they usually end in L-Y, yes. So most adverbs are formed by adding L-Y. So that word frantic has to be changed to, if we are adding L-Y, frantic has to be changed to frantically, all right? Frantic has to be changed to frantically. So we searched frantically for him, F-R-A-N-T-I-C-A-L-L-Y, and that's our adverb. So we circle frantic, and we write the correct thing, frantically. Other examples, sarcastic, sarcastically, right? Look at the spelling, drastic, drastically, all right? So we circle frantic and write the correct thing, and then we move on to number 18. Thankfully, a security guard, which came to our assistance, found him. Thankfully, a security guard which came to our assistance found him. Would we refer to the security guard as a witch? Not necessarily, right? So we have, thankfully, a security guard which came to our assistance. How are we referring to the security guard? The relative pronoun here, which is connected to the noun, right? We are referring to the security guard as which, and that is wrong. So we circle it, we need the correct relative pronoun. And from your notes you would know a relative pronoun is a pronoun that connects a clause or phrase to a noun or pronoun in a sentence. We use who for persons, whom for persons, that for person, animals and things, which for animals and things, whose for people and animals, and you must know this. All right, so who? This pronoun refers to the subject of a sentence, right? I, he, or she. Whom? This pronoun refers to the object, right? Him, her, or us. What are we going to use here? Who is correct? The subject, security guard, doing an action. He, right? So it, when we are doing an action, he can replace the subject, the security guard, he came to our sentence, assistance. So who came to our assistance? So the relative pronoun is who there that's needed and not which. So we circle which and we write who. So let's go over the verb there traveled was not was written in the present tense. So we had to write it in the past tense to conform with the rest of the passage, which was written in the past tense, T-R-A-V-E-L-L-E-D. In number 14, we had the wrong use of the pronoun. We had a personal pronoun and we needed a possessive pronoun, our teacher and not we teacher, O-U-R. Circle your we and put our in the correct box. We first found a toy shop after which we visited the arcade. 
had great fun there and then had lunch. So the correct conjunction there would be and because we are adding on information. Unfortunately, one student got lost on his way and not in his way. We have to know when to use our prepositions to the bathroom. We all searched frantically for him. The manner in which we searched was frantically. So we needed an adverb there. We put in our LLY with the correct spelling. Thankfully, a security guard, which or rather who came to our assistance, found him. So which was wrong? And we put in the correct relative pronoun, which is who. And there you have it. All six grammar errors figured out and the correct thing written in their boxes. Remember to ensure that you check and make sure you circle the correct thing in each line. And each line has a word that is circled. And it also has the correct word written in the box that is provided because this would mean that you are following your instructions to a T. So let's look at our rules. Past tense, double the last consonant L of base word and then add ED. So we have traveled, T-R-A-V-E-L-L-E-D. Use possessive pronouns act accurately in a maxi-taxi with our teacher and not with we teacher. All right? Conjunctions in context and adds information, but contrasts information. Had great fun day and then had lunch. Right? So using but there would have been wrong. Use prepositions accurately. In is an existent place. Inside, on can be used for position or movement to a place. One student got lost on his way and not in his way to the bathroom. And we'll create adverbs with words ending in IC. We add A-L-L-Y. So this is a rule that you must know for spelling as well, all right? Create adverbs with words ending in I-C. So frantic becomes frantically. We all searched frantically for him, right? And not searched frantic for him. Use relative pronouns accurately. Who refers to a person and the subject of the sentence. He can replace the subject. So the security guard who came to our assistance and not which came to our assistance. All right? So remember, reread your work carefully. Ensure to look for errors in every line. Make sure you have all your lines, uh, your errors c correctly circled and the right things written in the box provided. Thanks so much for paying attention. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Looking forward to being with you at another time. Be sure to look on at TTT where we're taking care of all your SEA needs with the Ministry of Education here in CNT.